All right, so the battle of the big rockets is heating up. While SpaceX reigns supreme right now in the rocket industry, somehow Blue Origin has risen after a relatively long period of silence. Jeff Bezos, who likes to talk a big game, even though he never has much to show for it, is now confident because all that's set to change at the end of September of this year. Blue Origin's new Glenn is now ramping up preparations for its maiden flight a little bit more so than we thought. We'll get into all this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before we do get into that, we just want to tell you, first, thank you all for watching this video. We've hit over 86,000 subscribers these last three years, and we are very close to 100K. To hit this, though, we do need your help. So we humbly ask, please hit that subscribe button now, and you are guaranteed to never miss out on our daily, sometimes twice daily, exciting videos about SpaceX. Let's continue. As we approach the end of 2024, space enthusiasts like us can't help but feel excited, as this time of the year is an ideal one for space companies to complete their unfinished goals in a fulfilling way. So, what do we have to look forward to in September? It's the launch schedules of a series of new rockets from the giants in the U.S. space industry. We got Vulcan from ULA with its second certification mission. There's SpaceX's Starship with a fifth test flight. And most notably, the debut launch of New Glenn at the end of September. This is the latest and only orbital rocket from Blue Origin, a company that's been a fierce rival of SpaceX for 20 years now. Okay, so many people might find it hard to believe, and some might even think of it being like the turtle, but Blue Origin is finally close to its first finish line. But perhaps now is the moment when the turtle's making its fastest sprint yet, as evidenced by the latest interview video from the famous space YouTuber Everyday Astronaut with Blue Origin's leader, Jeff Bezos. Through this, Blue Origin wants to show all of us how well prepared they are for New Glenn's first orbital flight. This is a big media move and a new step forward for Bezos, especially in light of the criticism that he and his company, among many, have faced over the years. Finally, he's got an orbital rocket and confidently boasts about this beloved creation. With a tentative launch date of September 29th, New Glenn seems almost ready from a manufacturing standpoint, although its parts are not yet fully put together. In fact, We've only seen a mock-up of New Glenn's first stage hardware at Cape Canaveral and haven't actually seen a rocket ready for flight. Regardless, though, Blue Origin has to be prepared for its first mission. The mission, named Escapade by NASA, is a mission to Mars, and the provider recently announced that two small spacecraft arrived in Florida to be ready for the flight coming soon. Accelerating to meet this, Blue Origin has conducted a series of test flights on various modules over the past few months. But before we dive into those tests, let's talk about the structure of the New Glenn rocket. The New Glenn rocket is an orbital rocket made of two stages, each consisting of smaller modules, aft, mid, and forward, starting with the first stage of the rocket. The forward module is essentially the top of the booster. We can see this more clearly in the Bezos interview video, as he explains. And uh, what you see, that um, uh, the, 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 the fabric covering is our thermal insulation. Oh, so cool. we developed that ourselves, and it's highly reusable. It's been tested on New Shepard. The mid module houses the fuel and oxidizer tanks. Made from aluminum, these tanks are designed to withstand the significant G loads encountered during re-entry. The aft module stands as a powerhouse, housing seven BE4 engines. These engines, known for their restartable capability, provide precision thrust vector control and continuous deep throttle capability. Bezos said, There are three gimbling engines on oh. this vehicle and four fixed engines that don't gimbal. So there's a line of three engines. When we, for the uh, return, we light the three gimbling engines to yep. do the full deceleration. And then we do the final landing on a single engine. The aft module probably features six deployable landing legs. This is a vital component for the precise landing operations of the stage on the drone platform in the Atlantic. Bezos also hinted at the capabilities of these landing legs during the interview. The landing gear, uh, deploy starting 14 seconds from landing, they deploy, takes them eight seconds to deploy. Okay. So they're fully deployed six seconds before landing. Okay. The deployment is gravity assisted because you're decelerating. Yep. So you've got good gravity assist on the gear deployment. Moving to the Ford module completes the trio. Four actuated aerodynamic control fins for attitude control during descent. It also serves as the housing for ground umbilical connections for New Glenn and the interstage housing for the two second stage vacuum optimized BE3U engines. Within this section, crucial avionics, including an autonomous flight safety system, are integrated to ensure precise control throughout the mission. 
Advancing to the second stage now, it comprises an expendable liquid hydrogen stage with a dual gambling BE3U engines, boasting a total thrust of 1,600 kilonewton or 240,000 pounds force in a vacuum. The second stage, with a diameter of 7 meters or 23 feet, has a length of 16.1 meters or 52.9 feet. The overall length, inclusive of the two high expansion ratio nozzles, is 23.4 meters. Similar to the first stage, the second one is segmented into aft, mid, and forward sections. Additional key features of the new Glen architecture include the pneumatic pusher stage separation system located in the forward module. This system ensures positive separation before the ignition of the second stage, contributing to the overall reliability of the launch. What tests has Blue Origin conducted on the individual modules of New Glenn? Over the past few months, Blue Origin has carried out several tests on New Glenn's hardware at Launch Complex 36. These tests are essential for gathering data before the rocket's first flight. At the beginning of July, recovery tests for the New Glenn transporter erector system were conducted LC-36. These tests involve pulling the large TE away from the vehicle and disconnecting the umbilical from the first and second stages. Blue Origin completed these tests within a few days before lowering the TE and mock-up stages back up to the horizontal position and rolling them back inside the hangar. Meanwhile, a new Glenn first stage aft module was spotted at the test area, located about 150 meters from the launch pad. Blue Origin later confirmed that the aft module was being tested, specifically demonstrating the development of six landing legs housed inside the module. The company's CEO, Dave Limp, confirmed that the aft module was flight hardware. This test indicates that the company's ambition to attempt a first stage landing on New Glenn's maiden flight. The forward module was moved towards LC-36 July 25th, and Dave Limp posted on X that the module's completed validation tests, including the activation of the reaction control system, which is crucial for controlling the booster in zero gravity and during landing, as well as the four large fins that help steer the booster. Both these systems are vital for making New Glenn's first stage reusable. On August 8th, a second stage of New Glenn was spotted outside Blue Origin's factory at Exploration Park, as well as being transported to LC-36. Dave Lent confirmed on X that this stage is flight hardware for the rocket's first mission. The second stage is expected to undergo tests at the launch pad before getting integrated with the first stage, which is also expected to get transported to LC-36 in the near future. So, let's consider whether Blue Origin really can catch up with SpaceX. Many believe that calling SpaceX and Blue Origin rivals is like saying the New York Yankees and a Little League team are rivals. There's really not much of a comparison to make. No offense. Much like SpaceX's next-gen Starship rocket, Blue Origin started work on its semi-reusable New Glenn rocket in the early 2010s. Both were massive, meant to be powered by huge new methane-oxygen-fueled engines, and designed from the ground up with some degree of reusability in mind. But with fairly different designs and wildly different development philosophies, the paths of Blue Origin and SpaceX have only gone further apart in these last six years. SpaceX thoroughly redesigned its next-gen rocket multiple times before throwing out a large portion of that prior work and settling on an unexpected stainless steel variant that Elon christened as Starship in late 2018. Further differentiating the companies, SpaceX started work on steel prototypes almost immediately and successfully built and flew a scrappy Pathfinder, powered by an early version of the same Raptor meant for Starship less than a year later. SpaceX then improvised a factory out of a series of tents and began churning out and testing dozens of more refined prototypes, seven of which would go on to do flight tests between August 2020 and May 2021. SpaceX's last test flight ended with a full-size steel Starship prototype successfully landing after launching to an altitude of 10 kilometers. The testing process significantly slowed down after that success, but in 2023, SpaceX did its first two orbital test flights. That orbital launch debut has been more or less continuously delayed for years and is about 26 months behind a tentative schedule Musk first sketched out in 2016. Technically, the same is true for Blue Origin, which also said it intended to debut New Glenn as early as 2020. However, while SpaceX can point to the instability of Starship's design before 2019 as a fairly reasonable excuse for delays, the general characteristics of New Glenn's design appear to be virtually unchanged despite their many delays. The smaller rocket, 7 meters wide and 98 meters tall, to Starship's 9 meter width and 121 meter height, will use traditional aluminum alloys for most of its structures, will be powered by 7 BE-4 engines, will land on several deployable legs, will have expendable upper stage powered by 2 BE-3U engines, and will be topped with a large composite payload fairing. In short, Bezos probably wants Blue Origin to go slowly but surely like the tortoise, but perhaps for this race, 
the SpaceX Bunny never stopped to rest. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and hope to see you back here next time. See ya.